Hey, welcome to Nasha's Art. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a small sculpture out of air dry clay. I'll include plenty of tips and tricks and lots of step by step procedures so that you can be as successful as possible in creating your own sculpture. I hope you love this tutorial. Please do like and subscribe and let's get straight to it. When you're creating a sculpture, of a human body, it's good to know the basic bones in the body first. So if you want to know a bit more about these bones, check out my tutorial here. What I've done is I've created a bone structure out of toothpicks. You can see here we have the spinal cord which goes down the centre of the body. I've created a sort of pelvis by packing up the masking tape there. I've got the leg bones, which we have the femur here, and one bone I've done here, which is the tibia. Off that, I will make the clay feet. Then we have the clavicle going across that provides more support for our shoulders and arms. And off that, I've done the humerus, which is the upper arm bone here. And I've just done one of these there, off which I can then create hands. On the spike at the top, we can rest the head. When you're attaching pieces using either air dry clay or normal clay, it's important to make something called slip. And all it is really, you can see I have water in this bowl, all slip is really is some clay that's been mixed with water until it reaches the consistency of ice cream. That takes a little while and patience, so you need to work the clay into the water and break it up until it's completely dissolved and it, as I said, it needs to be the consistency of ice cream. As you can see, I'm working this clay into the water and really mixing it together. It takes a good three or to four minutes to do this, but once you're done, it does come out the consistency of melted ice cream. Let's begin with our model. The first thing I think is good to start with is the body, because that helps to give us some stability. So I'm going to take my air dry clay out and I'm going to start with packing on the clay around the body. At the moment I'm not worried so much about moulding it to shape, as long as it's a sort of general shape without enormous lumps and bulges, general body shape. You can see I'm pulling it off here and I'm just packing out the body. And I'm going to turn it round and I can do the same on the back. And because this is all sort of going to be smoothed over wherever the joins are, I don't need to use slip yet. And once we've put this sort of base to the body on, we can then begin to start thinking about sculpting it and moulding it to look more like what we want, more like a body. bit of a lump on the shoulder there so that we have more of a shoulder shape. And the good thing about air dry clay of course is that we're not going to fire it, we don't need to put it in a kiln or an oven, so it doesn't matter about the masking tape being trapped inside.
kind of work on the base now so that I can sit the figurine down. Again, still working over the creases where I've added a new bit of clay to secure it and make sure it doesn't crack off. Now if you're working in the clay and you need to take a break, it's really important that your clay project doesn't completely dry out. So what you can do is cover it with cling film and a plastic bag in order to keep it from drying out completely. And you can keep it like that, nice and moist for probably a, a, you know, a good few days particularly if it's in, out of the sun, out of anywhere very dry, in a sort of dark, slightly damp corner. Of course, at the minute, your sculpture probably won't look like much, but we've got to keep packing it out. So we're going to go on to the legs now. And again, I'm gonna do a similar thing where I rip the clay off, where I attach it, I'm actually going to take a tool and just press in the clay around the leg. Can you see I'm making little marks there? I'm scoring the clay so that when I pack on the leg bit, it has something to stick to. And I'm going to take some slip bowl of slip and I'm going to paste that over where I've scored the clay and that will help when I put on this new clay it will help to keep it there and I even score the other side here and you can see how I'm twisting that around to make that thigh the other side at the bottom and where the two pieces join I'm going to smooth it over. Sometimes the tools work really well for that so I'm going to smooth over the join where the leg meets the body. Later we can turn that into the shape of clothing, trousers, whatever. But for now, I just want to make sure that that join is secure so that later on it won't crack off and I lose a leg. Turn it all the way around and smooth over that joint. If you need to add more clay, take some over it. There's already slip there so it should be quite good as long as you smooth it in carefully to the rest of it. Sometimes your fingers are best and sometimes when it's a bit of a difficult nook or cranny to get in the tools work really well. I'm going to smooth it over quite a lot, dragging a bit of the clay over the crack. I've scored it, I've added the slip, and I'm going to now pack it over the knee and the thigh like I did before. And what's good is the masking tape underneath provides a bit of security for the joint and also a bit of bulk for the knee joint. You can see on this leg here where I've got the masking tape ready and waiting and it gives a bit of a knee joint there. To avoid further cracking, it's also good to 
let your clay model dry slowly rather than hurry it along. So partially cover it with you know a bit of foil, sorry cling film or plastic bag and like I said leave it out of the way of the window or bright sunlight where it would get warm too quickly so that it can dry slowly because the slower it dries the less cracks you'll end up with. So I've ripped more clay off, I've put the slip and I've scored it and I'm going to now continue down the leg and for this bit I almost wonder whether it's worth doing it lengthways. I want this figure to be wearing jeans or trousers or something like that and I've just taken basically two bits of clay and moulded it around the, the toothpick. Sometimes air dry clay dries out a lot quicker than normal clay. If that's the case, you can put your finger in the slip and just rub it over it gently and that will moisten it a bit and keep it workable. You can squeeze the clay and model it into shape at this point, as I'm doing here. But it's also important to keep twisting the model round to see what it looks like from different angles. And as you can see, back here needs more work. So I'm going to carefully turn it over, support the model with my hands, and just work gently with the tool to secure that join behind the knee. If your model was standing, you'd still do a similar process, it just wouldn't be bent at the knee. So that's always your choice, how you want your figurine or your model to, to stand or sit. One is just bent and the other is just straight. I'm going to work on the foot shape now for that bit and then move on to the other leg. The top is maybe drying a little bit so I'm just going to paste a little bit of slip over the top so that it doesn't completely dry out in case I need to add more layers of clay. Because we know I definitely will need to add arms on so we don't want it to dry out. Now that the legs are vaguely in shape, the next step is to get the arms and the head 
and I'm going to do those much the same way that I did the legs but I do need to be careful because the clay around the top of the arm has dried a little bit so I'm going to make sure that I really score it so that the arm will attach and not crack off later. Got my clay. I'm going to begin to score it and add the slip. Begin to attach it, making sure that I have a shoulder shape as I'm smoothing over the clay that I add. And whenever you're doing 3D sculptures, it's important to turn them round so that you can ensure that you're sculpting from all sides and it looks good from different angles and it's securely attached both at the back and the front. If there's lumps and bumps that are very difficult to smooth out, you can attach, as long as the clay isn't very dry, you can attach more clay on top and then smoothen that off. And the slip is quite helpful as well in doing that. really looking forward to getting the head on and showing you how you can do curls using a strainer so that's exciting but we've got to get these arms done first I'm going to roll a bit of a tube for the rest of the arm and stick it up along the spike um, it'll be a little bit quicker and it will still should be quite secure but I'm just going to add a little bit of slip I'll show you what I mean so I'm going to slide that making sure it goes in the middle up the arm and now focus on the join where the elbow is And now I'm going to use my fingers to continue moulding the rest of the arm. I might have him resting his hand on his knee. That will also give a bit of strength. If we have the knee supporting the arm, there's less likelihood of the arm cracking off. So that's also a little trick you can do to help support and strengthen the figure, the model. You want to taper the end because of the wrists. So we need to get slimmer for the wrists. You can see I'm just sort of gently pressing the clay around and I might just use the tool to get a bit more of the arm shape that we want. Earlier I said that it would be much safer if 
you attach the hand to the body, whether it's a hand touching the face or the head or on the lap or touching each other, whatever you do, secure the hands to something that's stable because hands and fingers are so fragile with air dry clay that they often tend to break. So you can see that I've formed a sort of flat hand shape and now we're going to just indicate the fingers a bit like this here but on the other side. We know that the thumb will be in towards the body so I'm going to make a cut there and you can see already that looks a little bit like a thumb and I'm now going to make cuts for the fingers and look I'm moving further down and I'm just making cuts there's different tools that you could use for this and some are better than others Make sure you do enough fingers, of course. And then take off any excess clay. So I can see here, I've got some excess clay there that I don't need, otherwise we'll end up with too many fingers. And you can see I'm gently pulling that clay off. And smoothing it down and then you want to sort of work on the size of the fingers so obviously this is the little finger so we need that shorter and you can model those shapes of the fingers using various tools as well wrist so I'm just sort of digging to clear the clay a little bit there just to give a bit more of a wrist and the slip you can smooth off any uh, rough edges rough bits with the slip. And then just work at each finger until they're how you want them. Again looking at a hand or doing a few sketches of hands first and working from those can be really helpful. Um, you almost think of when you're doing this, you think about it as you're removing the space between the fingers and allowing the clay to stay there. So you're kind of digging out what you don't need, which will then leave the finger that you do need. far less likely with this approach to lose hands and fingers when the clay dries. If there's bits where you've dug out too much, like you can see 
just on this finger I've dug out a bit much that's all right you just put a little bit of clay on the tool you see here I've got a little bit of clay on the tool and as long as it's soft enough you can add back in what you want so now I've fixed the hole in the finger and I'm just smoothing it gently over repeatedly with the tool until it looks like it's part of the finger again. Obviously the more detailed you want your sculpture to be, the longer it's going to take and the more tools you'll need to carve each little shape. But you could also do a more impressionistic sculpture which isn't so perfectly carved and it just gives that idea, that sense of the person and what they're doing in the sculpture rather than this sort of intense detailed look and both have their charm it's now time to add the head but before we create it let's make sure that we score the neck area So that if the clay has dried out there's still opportunity for us to attach the head securely. This bit will also help to keep the head attached because heads, arms, hands, fingers often fall off with their dry clay so we want to avoid that as much as possible. So I've got a sort of head shape and I'm just rolling it. We want to try and make sure that the head isn't too big. Generally, the human head fits approximately seven to eight times in the body, including the head. So we also want to get that kind of typical head shape. So it's not quite, it's not a ball. We want to you know, get that the back of the head coming out where we have the brain back here. And we want to bring this bit forward where the face would be so that we've got much more accurate head shape. You can even mold it a little bit more dips where the eyes would be, nose, chin. And the brain at the back. Okay, so I'm also going to slip this where it will attach to the neck and I'm going to get that head on, I might add a bit more slip to the neck area and then very important part is to get the join as well as we can. So I'm going to pop the head on now and we need a neck so I'm going to use my tool to uh, dig in under the head to bring a neck to sculpt a neck in between the head and the body. I'm 
Maybe I can prop this up so you can see a bit more. <coughs> So I'm digging under the head, in with the tool, to provide a neck for the sculpture. I thought I'd show you the exciting bit, which is adding hair, before we finally do the details of the face. So I'm rubbing slip over the back of the head where the hair would be. And I've got various different strainers, which we can push clay through and see if we get the hair texture that we like. Can you see that I'm pushing it through and we get clay coming, coming through the strainer there. I have to push quite hard but it does come out. What we then need to do is grab quite a sharp edged tool, not sharp but you know, a little bit and scrape that carefully off. Sometimes it's hard to scrape it without damaging it, but you can see what I'm doing there. And I'm just putting it on the head of the figure. These rubber tools are very useful and again you can get them in craft shops, ceramic shops, Amazon and they're great for making indentations in clay where you want subtle shapes so it's quite good for say the face where I want to be sculpting and just pressing shapes into the clay rather than digging out or cutting out areas. So if you can get these tools, they're very nice. If you can't, a blunt pencil could work as well. Um, end of toothpicks and kebab sticks also do work. And you really just want to gently and carefully work into the face until you get the kind of shapes that you want. And make indentations with the eyes like I've done here. Gently press under the nose and in the nostrils with the tip. And you'll see that the clay begins to sort of bend and mould to what you need.
press next to the nose in a bit you can get sort of cheekbones but you have to be a bit careful And remember, no face is ever completely symmetrical. So one side, you try to get it as much as you can, similar to the other, but you don't need to get it exactly the same, just similar, because that's accurate to life. Notice I'm supporting the back of the head with my fingers. That's quite important because the pressure of you pushing against the face can ca could cause the head to become dislodged. So support the back of the head with whatever you're doing. working the excess clay off that where I marked the top of the t-shirt you could put a beard on the character if you wanted use the same technique with the hair with the netting the sieve pushing the clay through the sieve I hope this tutorial gave you a good idea of how to begin making clay models, you know, making little sculptures and, and models. There's, it's such a, such a rich art, there's so many different ways you can do it and so many different techniques, but this might be a good technique just to get started with smaller models. Larger models would need more of an armature under them. You could use for those kind of models um, aluminium foil and make a kind of armature out of the aluminium foil. And that will work okay with air dry clay. But for smaller models like this, the toothpicks and kebab sticks work fine. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please do like and subscribe and also check out my other artwork on Instagram and Facebook at Nash Henkel Art.